And this particular project is looking at one of the most contested cities in the world, Jerusalem, but one of the most contested spaces in the city of Jerusalem. Um, and this is, of course, um, or is it Al-Aqsa, or is it Temple Mount, or is it Haram Ha-Sharif, or shall we just call it the sacred compound? I mean, we begin straight away with the problem of what do we call that particular space. There is a, the, uh, it's contested, even the very title of it. Um, so, you begin with this talk about what name, the complexity of the name, and the whole study which is going to look at the access to uh, Al-Aqsa Temple Mount and make a comparison with the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Now, 32 acres um, is about, for those who've been to the Vatican, about a third of the size of the Vatican. Now, whereas the Vatican has become an incredible tourist attraction, the Al-Aqsa Temple Mount almost repels capitalism. It has a force field around it in a way. Um, but nevertheless, it is an area that on a Friday, for example, 35,000 Muslims visit for daily prayers. So we have a whole question of how do we access that space. And a study like this have to ask ourselves the question, if you go to the next one, when does it start? Do we start it under the Ottomans who created what's called the status quo in the mid-19th century? Uh, the status quo being what can be done inside that place or not? Or do we start it when the British arrived in 1917? Or maybe when the British handed over to the United Nations in 1947? Or maybe when the Jordanians took control in 1948? Or maybe when the Israelis took control in 1967? So even the very moment a study and a comparison um, begins is a problem and a question. And of course, within each of those periods, uh, each of those um, forces that control that area, um, there are particular moments, um, again, which could be uh, the beginning of this study. But since time is so limited, I want to show you what we're comparing it to. Um, we're comparing it to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Now, you may ask, what's contested about the Church of the Holy Sepulchre? Well, for those of you who've been there, know that there are three major Christian groups, the Greeks, the Latins, that is the Catholics, and the Armenians, alongside three smaller Christian groups, the Copts, the Abyssinians, and the Syrians, each of whom have particular spaces, and each of whom have worked out some kind of status quo, in theory, um, in how to manage that space, um, how to allow access for certain prayers, how to restore the building, what happens when a stone falls down, or a light bulb needs replacing. I'll tell you one story where a friend of mine in Jerusalem was actually called out in the middle of the night to replace a light bulb because the different Christian groups couldn't agree who should do it. So we have a contested space. Uh, we have a contested space um, not just about access but uh, about um, maintenance, about restoration. And just so you can see within the church, the Holy Sepulchre, how complicated a space it is how one has to navigate that space and how one moves around that space. Now what's interesting, in the last 20 years, the relations between the different Christian groups in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre have warmed up. To such an extent, there has been restoration, and if you've, if you've visited in the last year, it, it's become a revitalized space in terms of the, um, uh, the painting on the walls, in terms of the movement of peoples, because these groups have actually got together and built a relationship or built relations which have allowed that to happen. The opposite is true with Al-Aqsa Temple Mount, where relations have become much more tense. Um, when I was there in February, uh, a fairly serious demonstration broke out in front of me, and it was wonderful to see it happening. I mean, not so wonderful it happened, but to uh, someone who's interested in how people move around that space, it was great to see it in action. And what was also interesting was how the security services, the, the Jordanian, the Palestinian, the Israeli police, were working together at that particular moment, which belies some of the political negotiations. I titled the talk about asking the right questions rather than seeking the answers because what the project's trying to do is not deal with things like security or sovereignty. We're never going to be able to make uh, even the Wolf Institute much difference in terms of that. But the questions that the project is asking is about access, it's about maintenance, it's about day-to-day -day activities, it's about communication, it's even about prayer. And the hope being that we make a comparison 
between the different perceptions of what the status quo is, which has never been written down. Everybody claims to observe the status quo, but the other breaks it. But nobody's able to articulate what the status quo is. So our goal is to document what people perceive the status quo to be. And almost like the hexapla, for those of you who looked at the Church Fathers, the, the, the hexapla that or Origen created was six columns of different um, transliterations, the Greek and the Hebrew text of the Old Testament. And my hope is to create a kind of hexapla of the status quo, where we can see the different perceptions of what the status quo is. Um, through an examination of the historical documents and interviews with all the local actors who are willing to speak to us. Thank you.